Caviar is a term for the salted eggs of the sturgeon fish. A pearly delicacy, they've long been the snack food of the privileged, enjoyed for centuries by Roman emperors, Saudi sheiks, Russian tsars, and English kings. A few nibbles still offer a taste of the high life. Caviar is sometimes called black gold. No wonder. A teaspoon of fish eggs costs more than a meal at some family restaurants. For most of us, a little caviar is a big splurge. Overfishing has depleted wild Siberian sturgeon stalks. So at this hatchery in the southern United States, they farm the species for their eggs and flesh. They feed the young fish high-protein pellets. The juvenile sturgeon fish need constant nourishment to develop. A computerized system dispenses feed every four minutes. As the fish grow larger, the feeding schedule ratchets down a bit. The fish produce tiny metabolites that are toxic to them. Those are filtered out by bacteria introduced for this purpose. Staff routinely test the tank water to ensure the bacteria are doing their job adequately. After a few months of growth, they transfer the fish to larger tanks. Here, mesh drums filter the solid waste they produce. Pumps constantly circulate the water to move it through plastic nuggets that house the all-important filtering bacteria. Circulating the water also disperses carbon dioxide gas emitted by the fish and introduces oxygen, which they need to survive and thrive. Ordinary molasses injected into the tanks is consumed by the beneficial bacteria, helping them to process the harmful metabolites produced by the fish. After five to seven years of growth, the fish are at least a meter in length, and they should be full of eggs. Workers transfer them to tubs and mix in a gas to put the fish to sleep. Now sedated, the fish can be more easily handled and are taken to the ultrasound station. Using high-frequency sound waves, they probe the sturgeon's ovaries. This gives them a clear picture of her egg production. She should contain tens of thousands of eggs. If not, she'll go back into the tank to mature some more. But if she's ready, they'll harvest the ovaries. They clean the egg-laden ovaries and transfer them by the bagful to a chilled room with filtered air. This is just one of the Siberian sturgeon's two ovaries and it's a mass of roe, fish eggs that are about to become pure caviar. They're extremely fragile and need careful handling to separate them from the membrane. This worker gently rubs the eggs against a mesh screen. She sets the tissue aside for composting and lifts the screen, revealing the thousands of delicate sturgeon eggs. But this caviar isn't quite ready yet. She now rinses the eggs repeatedly with cold water to wash away impurities like bits of broken eggs and tissue residue. Using tweezers, she picks out remaining specks of membrane and crushed egg remnants until what's left is pure and perfect. She pours the eggs into a fine mesh colander. The volume decreases as the water drains off. She weighs the drained caviar and seasons it with salt, measuring an amount that's about 3.5% of the caviar's weight. This precise salting maximizes the caviar's flavor and substantially improves shelf life. She puts the eggs on ice for about six minutes to absorb the salt. The salt draws out more moisture, so she drains it one more time. A worker blots up remaining moisture with a highly absorbent paper towel. Another worker pulls away the towel gently, leaving the pearls of caviar intact. She packs it into a lacquer-lined tin and presses down the clusters of eggs to eliminate any air pockets, which would cause oxidation and spoilage. She seals the tin with a thick band of rubber. This caviar has been many years in the making. Farm produced, no wild fish were destroyed to get these eggs to market. And that means they should appeal to a growing appetite for something a little more sustainable. <laughs>